This is my Mac Mini G4, and I absolutely love this system. It's pretty awesome, but it's 16 years old, so it can do with an upgrade. Now, I run an alternative system, so you can see I've already pimped it out with a bit of 3D printing stuck on the top, and uh, you can use these upgrades on anything, really. So um, they'll benefit Tiger as well as the operating system Morphos that I'm using. These are the components, so I've got some more RAM, I'm going to replace it with an SSD and I've got the live CD uh, to boot into. This is a cool little device. This is the MSATA drive and um, it's not that expensive and this is 256 gig. And what you do is you actually put it on this little converter and this converter is really cool because it means you can put SSD on anything with an old IDE drive so uh, you just put the MSATA card in there and then tighten it all up and this could be used with multiple retro gear uh, you could have it in your system and I, I just love the kind of idea that you'd have this little fake hard drive which was actually an SSD to put in there so this is some testing and uh, the cool thing about Morphos is it, it plays video off YouTube it does a uh, Loads of things that actually the Mac OS can't handle that well. Um, this is an example of 360 video. So this is 360 full screen off YouTube, which looks really good actually. And it's using a new browser, a WebKit browser that's in development called Wayfarer. Now, what I'm going to try and do is run 720, which it seems to struggle with. And... Um, you can see I'm dragging it around the window and there's like a little bit of kind of lag and a pause. So um, I'm going to change the quality to 720 and let's see how this machine actually copes with it. And this is before the upgrade, so with less RAM and I'm using the IDE hard drive still. And you can see as it's loading up, it is struggling and it's buffering a bit. So if you guys are interested in the Morphos operating system. I'll leave some links in the show notes and you can actually dual boot with Tiger. So you can have the uh, Morphos operating system, which is an Amiga inspired operating system running. And it's really good fun actually. And this is probably the cheapest way to get Amiga next generation. Now you can see we're running 720p in the window there. It's struggling a bit, full screen, it just gives up. Now, this is also the reset, so we can see how quickly it resets and uh, compare that later on. Now, this is the hardest part of getting into the Mac Mini, which is uh, getting into the sides. And you are going to do a little bit of damage to the sides. You know, it's really tough because you've got to get into this thin gap at the side. So I recommend using this tool and... Uh, popping open some of the clips and then continuing down. I, I tried to use a screwdriver, uh, a little one at the side, but actually that started causing more issue and more marks on it. You know, and once you've gotten these, it's, it's never going to be perfect. And as you're going round, you can see all the clips are, are popping and it's actually rising up. And it's really satisfying <laughs> once you've popped everything and you realise you can take it out and uh, take the Mac to pieces. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> really compact and tight in there. So I replaced the RAM there and I've put the new RAM module in. Um, hopefully this should make a difference. I think one gig is a maximum you can get to and it's got to be the old DDR RAM, but that's really not that expensive these days. So it's pretty reasonable to do this upgrade. And then you have to get to the joy of getting to the hard drive. So with the hard drive, you've got three screws that you need to remove here and uh, take the whole kind of mount off with the CD-ROM drive in there as well. There's a bit of tape as well. You don't want to catch things. And then you have to get the old IDE hard drive enclosure out. Um, it's quite annoying because you've got to take the fan out as well to get to the extra screw. So I, I was uh, 
having fun with that, trying to get into the screws, but also there's a lot of stuff like cables taped down that you, you, you need to re-tape and uh, keep it all nice in there, keep a, a good airflow. But you basically pop the hard drive out and then you shove your new one in and it, and it fits completely the same. It's, it's the same size. It's a lot lighter as well, actually, which is really good. So then you tighten it all up and uh, basically do the opposite of the process to get it all kind of going again. And uh, fingers crossed, it will work the first time. <laughs> you need to put the screws back in. And I found this one screw was really hard to put in and I don't have magnetic screwdrivers. So I ended up getting some tweezers and just kind of dropping it in there. <laughs> um, it was quite tough to get this tiny little screw in there. But uh, once I did, it was all secure and you had to put it back together, which was a case of pushing the kind of case back into position and then getting some of the clips at the back so it properly popped in. Now what we're doing here is a fresh install. So we've booted off that live CD and um, we can see that it's actually detecting the hard drive, which is <laughs> pretty awesome that it detected it straight away the first time. And I've decided to do a 100 gig partition for the Morphos operating system because I want to have Tiger running on the other installation. And what you do is you install Morphos first. And look at that. That was the um, load up compared to before. And it's just running really snappy, really fast. And uh, it's silent as well with the um, hard drive, all you're going to get is uh, the fans kind of kicking in. Now, look at that compared to before, kind of being able to move it around. We're going full screen here, and this one's uh, 360 again, which, to be honest, uh, looks quite good to me, but I really wanted to test out that 720 and, and see how that one worked. Now, I've done a little bit of a cut, cut there because the buttons are quite hard to actually select on um, on this browser at the moment, but I don't know which setting's correct. You need to spoof it and you need to do loads of different kind of things for the browser to actually get this working, like install libraries and, uh, you know, tell it to actually do media playback on the site. But that was 720p in windowed as well there. So we've just switched over to the mode and that's looking a lot better. And remember, last time it wouldn't play in 720p full screen. And there you go. It's it's massively improved. So I decided to, you know, play about, have a little game on there. Um, of course, Duke Nukem and stuff, but I can install some games later on that, you know, have, have a lot more uh, Amiga basis and uh, history about them but also you can run emulators on this so it's a fantastic emulation system and uh, it's just actually really good to play with it's got a 20 minute demo and that, that times out but uh, I suggest you guys register it and, and support the developers another thing that I love doing is watching demos and uh, I know people love Amiga demos well, this is the PowerPC scene, and there are some really cool PowerPC demos. There's some great design, and uh, it's just awesome to explore the library because not many people are playing the PowerPC demos. And I had a really good fun just kind of looking through these and uh, seeing some of the scene stuff. It was, it was pretty awesome. There's some nice, like, old-school Amiga effects, but then they're using all the extra power in there. And I think that... Um, gig of RAM really helped and the hard drive access is just a lot faster. So I recommend this upgrade to anybody that's looking to upgrade their system and, uh, you know, get a bit more bang out of this old 16 year old system. And uh, if you're into power PC, if you're into the kind of niche of power PC, I definitely suggest you check out Morphos operating system because the Mac stuff's great on there and I want to do a, a video about the Mac stuff as well and see how hard you can push it but also I think you should check out Morphos because it is a wicked little fun operating system inspired by the Amiga and compatible in so many ways. Um, thank you so much for watching. 
don't forget to subscribe and check out my podcast as well, which is the Retro Hour. Every single week, we interview a developer, an artist, a content creator, all in the retro video game world. And my God, we've just hit 300 episodes. So it's, it's fantastic. We've been doing it a long time. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. Ciao.